Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel again. Many of you ask me about making a tutorial on installing Windows 10 on KVM. For those of you who don't know, Kimo or KVM is a virtualization solution built into the Linux kernel. Its main advantage is that it's fast and it's very flexible. Compared to VirtualBox, it definitely performs better when we install Linux installations. With Windows, it performs okay, but sometimes you might want to install Windows in here to try dual booting other Linux distributions and test out maybe some other software. So this is what we're going to do in this tutorial. Let's get going. So if you want to install Windows 10 on KVM, maybe for testing purposes, or you want to try dual booting Windows 10 with other Linux distros, we need to download first the Windows 10 ISO if you don't already have one. So I prepared already a website here. And you just Google Windows 10 ISO and you will be brought to this website. So here you can select, for example, the edition. Well, we have only Windows 10 and click Confirm. Select the language. And when you click Confirm, you will be given the link to download your ISO. So once you downloaded that, we can start up KVM. So let's close this window up. And I'll pull up KVM here. And I have already some machines available here, but they want to create a new one. So I'll just click on the plus. And I want to choose here local install media and click forward. Now, no media selected here. We need to select the ISO we just downloaded. We could browse here by clicking the arrow or we can click browse and then click browse local. And we select the ISO from here and then click open. It's going to be detected automatically and then we can click forward. Here we can decide how much memory and CPUs we want to give to the machine. On the bottom here, you see how much is left for RAM and for CPUs. In my case, I'm going to give, for example, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I'm going to bump up this to 4 processor and click forward. Now we can select how much space we want to give to the machine. On my disk here, I still have 600 gigabytes available. So I want to bump up this to 100, let's say, and then click forward. Now we have a summary, we can give a name. So I call my machine, for example, WinKVM. And this is the summary of the RAM and the CPUs. And for the network selection, we can normally let the default. And if you want to customize further the installation, definitely click on Customize Configuration, which I definitely want to do, and then click Finish. Now, here is where we can configure the system. For example, on the overview, we can tell KVM if this is a BIOS system or a UEFI system. So in my case, I want to go to UEFI, so I'll just click the second link here. This is a UEFI option, but we have also an option here for UEFI Secure Boot, depending if you install this in KVM. But I'm going to go here for UEFI and click Apply for the changes to take effect. Then I need to go to the boot options because I need to enable the boot menu and click also the CD-ROM because this is where the ISO is and pull it up on the first place and click Apply. And the last thing I want to do also is go to the video. Right now it's video QXL. So we have several choices here. We could go also with Virtio. The problem with Virtio is that 3D acceleration is supported, but the video drivers do not support the best resolution available. So even we click apply now, we could start the machine up, but you will not have the full resolution. So I'll click back here to QXL and click apply. And then we can click begin installation. So it's going to take a moment to create the domain and the machine. There you go. So we press any key to boot from CD or DVD. And I'm going to go full screen here. And so now we can proceed with the installation. So I'm just going to choose here my keyboard layout because as always, I don't have a US keyboard. So I'm just going to select mine here and click next and then click install now. Now I don't have a product key right now, so I can click here on I don't have a product key. And here I can choose the product I want to install because I didn't put a key in. We could choose Home, but I'm going to go here with Windows 10 Pro and then click Next. Now we need to accept the license here and click Next. And now we need to click Custom. The disk is already selected, so we can click Next. And now we need to wait until the setup finishes, so I'll be back when it's done. So we can restart the machine, so we just click Restart now. It's going to take a moment to boot up again. And this time we don't press any key. So it should boot up the machine fine. And we have a reboot right now, so it's going to take again a moment to boot up. So the machine went on to a few reboots and the setup menu is coming up very soon. And there you go. So I'm just going to go here very quickly through the setup. So I'm just going to click yes here, even I'm not in the States. And again, I'm going to choose my keyboard, which is right here and click yes. 
I'm going to click skip here. Now internet should be automatically set up and I'll select here set up for personal use and click next. And I'm not going to send in with a Microsoft account. I'm going to go with the offline account. So let me create my account here and I'll meet you back once it's done. And there you go. The setup is now complete. So let's close up the browser and let's right click here on the start menu and go to device manager. And we see we have some devices which are not detected automatically. And that's because we need to install an extra package from the internet. So let's close this up and open up Microsoft Edge here. And let me go full screen if it's not the full resolution yet. And let's type in here, Spice Tools, and hit enter. And let's click on the first link. And let's scroll down here until we find the Windows Guests, which are down here, Windows Binaries. Now we can click on Windows Guest Tools, Spice Guest Tools, and we can click on Run. It's going to take a moment to download. And let's click Yes here. And it's going to open up the installer. Let me close Edge. And let's click Next. And click Agree to the license. And it's going to take a moment here to install the drivers. Here we can click Install for installing the virtual serial driver. And the setup is finished. So we can click Finish here. And for the changes to take effect fully, we need to restart once the machine. So let's click on the Start menu and click on Restart. It's going to take a moment to do that. There you go. So I can enter my password. And now let's go again to the Start menu, right-clicking and go to Device Manager. And we have everything in here. And under Display Adapters, we have also the Red Hat QXL controller. So we can close this up. And if we right-click now on the screen and go to Display Settings, Let's scroll down to the resolution here and let's click on the list. And we do have our 1920 per 1080 resolution. So I can click this and keep the changes. So now the resolution is OK and the machine is working absolutely fine. So this is how you can install basically Windows 10 on KVM. There is still one thing which I'd like to show you. Let me turn off the machine and go to shutdown. And I'm going to switch over to the other monitor. So I'll be back with you in a second. So I'm here on the machine and I click on the information center here and let's go down to the video queue Excel. Now you see the thing here is that by default, the machine has only 16 megabytes of RAM. So that can be a little bit small, especially if you're expecting a bit better performance, but we can change this fairly easily. We just need to make sure that editing XML in KVM is active. To do this, we need to go to the KVM main window, go under edit and then preferences and make sure that Enable XML Editing is checked on. Now we can close this up and go back to the other window. And here when we go to XML, we can change the value in this VGA memory. So right now it's 16,384, which is basically 16 per 1,024. So let's say, for example, we want to give the memory 512 megabytes. We would have to calculate 512 per 1,024, which is going to be 524288. And then we can click apply. And when we go back to the details, we see our memory increased here. So here you will have anyway better performance. Anyway, this is how to install Windows 10 on KVM. It's not as complicated as it used to be in the past. And it's a great method if you want to try out on your Linux machine, you're booting other distributions with Windows 10, or you need to run some programs which are Windows only. And there you go, guys. This is how you can install Windows 10 on KVM. It has a decent performance for normal use, but don't expect the best 3D performance out of it. In fact, from the three virtualization solutions available on Linux, VirtualBox, VMware, and KVM, the one which performs better with Windows 10 is actually VMware. If you want to have the best Linux performance available on a virtual machine, definitely go with KVM. And VirtualBox is somewhere in the middle, but it's proven to be very solid with both OSs. Now, I would like to also communicate to you that in July we will have another live stream. I don't know exactly yet when it's going to be. I'm going to communicate this at least two weeks before. We are going to make a full installation of Arch Linux with a better FS file system, with a desktop environment and Snapper. So I hope to see many of you there on the live stream. Again, as I said before, I'm not sure yet when exactly it's going to be, but I'm going to make sure that it's going to be at least announced two weeks before the live stream itself. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching this video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.